swim, bike, run. This is Endurance FM with Graham Brown. Hello and welcome to Endurance FM. My name is Graham Brown. We are all about the entrepreneurs of endurance. Today I want you to take, well I want you to switch gears a little bit, grab your oars or is it paddles? I don't know, but grab your kayak because we're going to talk about kayathlons. That's new. What is a kayathlon? What's that about? And to tell us, help us understand what the world of kayathlon is about, we've got Greg Dillon who is the founder of Kayathlon Ireland. He's going to talk about the adventure sport, the multi-sport business in Ireland, how that's booming as well as how to grow a website like his on a minimal budget by going out and doing grassroots marketing. Endurance FM, voice of the endurance sports business. 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 Greg, welcome to the show. Thank you. Good morning, Graham. Well, good How morning. Good very good. It's very good to have you on the show. Where are you today? I am uh, from Dublin, Ireland. Dublin, Ireland. Thanks. Nice, uh, sunny Dublin, Ireland this morning, and nine degrees, and that's that's sunny for this time of year. <laughs> yeah, you know? Is so, that the kind of weather you want to be out in the kayak? Yes, yeah, yes. Uh, typically, typically, we uh, from from an Ireland Irish point of view, you know, we don't, we don't take the hot weather well. <laughs> <laughs> this is perfect for you. So, just explain yeah. to us, you know, endurance FM. We talked a lot about Ironman triathlon. People understand that, but what is a kayathlon? A kayathlon, uh, yeah, it's basically um, a multi-sport race. It's uh, made up of three disciplines, uh, running, cycling, and uh, kayaking. Mm. Um, and these races are usually run over different distances, um, three different distances, uh, three different distances, sorry, um, on average uh, for each race or, or for each event, should I say. Right, okay. And what would be the typical distances for a, a kayak bike run? Yeah, uh, roughly the, the 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 kind of they call a mini sport and ex an ex, expert. The mini is usually around twenty k marker. Um, the sport is can be between the forty to forty five k, and then the expert will be fifty to seventy, depending depending on the on the the breakdown of the actual race itself. Got it. Are, are these sort of? I don't want to say this in the pejorative, but are these sort of fun races? Because you know, you know, I say that with air quotes as well. Because you know, when I think of something like that, you know, compared to you know, maybe something like Ironman triathlon, everybody's so dead serious, right? You know, yeah, all yeah that no. gear and the what's it like at a kayathlon? It's a it's a fifty fifty split, really, to be honest. Because um, you will get guys. Um, who will be you know flat out and they're out there to win and they want a podium and all that sort of rest, all that sort of bit and that's fine but you will get the vast majority are out there for a bit of fun a bit of bit of crack you know get around the day have a have a, have a nice day and you know uh, and uh yeah so it's a good a good a good mix of of, of both like so so mm -hmm. All right, we're going to talk about how you got into this in a minute, Greg. But you yeah. recently were at an event just last weekend, right? Can you just tell us about That's the event. Right. Just give us an idea of understand. Describe to us what a kayathlon event is like. Yeah, oh, it's brilliant. Well, this one, this one last weekend uh, is called Quest Glendalock. Uh, it was actually the first one I ever did, um, and it's my second time doing it. Uh, it is there's eighteen hundred competitors um, or uncommon competitors. People togged out for the day, um, and there was like a, three different three different distances. There was the mini, which was the nineteen k, uh, which is the one I did actually. I did the forty one k last year, and I said I'd try my hand at nineteen k this year. Um, and there's a forty one, obviously, and then there was I think it's a fifty seven was the, was a long one. As the expert, um, how does so, that break down? Uh, just out of interest, nineteen k. What's the distance? Yeah, nineteen. Yeah, nineteen k. That was what was it? That was twelve k of a cycle, mm. which was on a uh, roads road cycle. Uh, it wasn't in this particular one. It, they can vary from event to event, and a lot of some some of it can be like off road, you know, uh, trail and that sort of stuff. But this particular particular one was was road. So it was twelve k mm. road. Then there was a four k run. Uh, then it was a 1k kayak and a 2k run. Oh, okay, right. So the kayak comes at the end. Then the yeah, well, it can vary. It can vary from event to event. Um, I did one last year down in Dingle in County Kerry and the uh, kayaking was uh, the second event hmm. of it. You know? So it can, it can vary. There's no set pattern uh, between events. The only, the only pattern is you're going to do the three disciplines somewhere along the way and in, in, in some cases 
you may have to cycle twice and run three times, you know, this sort of thing, but depending on your distance and, uh, yeah. Interesting. So it's kind of mixing up a little bit as well. I suppose it's quite refreshing as well from your sort of standard multi-sport event. I'm just curious, Greg, how do, how do the transitions work with the kayak? Do, do people have to carry the kayaks or what? I mean, just explain to me. No, 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 no. So far in any of the races I've, I've done, I and mean, this is a general thing, you, you don't, the, all the kayaks are provided. Um, all the rowing, all the kayaking gear is, is provided, your, your jacket, your oar, your, your kayak itself. Um, so you basically you come down, you beep in with your with your, with your dipper as you would normally in a in one of these one of these races. Uh, you get timed, you run down. The officials are there. These are dual kayaks, and so there's two people in the kayaks. And you can either if you're with someone, that's fine, or you, you can get paired off if you go down. The officials will will, will pair you off, and uh, they'll give you your jacket and your oar, and and there's your kayak, and off you go and do your kilometer, or two kilometers, three kilometers, whatever the race may be. And you come back to square one, usually sort of a triangular fashion. So you mm. start, you come back at the starting point, and then off with the gear and off for a run or a cycle, whatever the next uh, next event is or the next uh, discipline is. Awesome. I did a, a what, well, I suppose it is a triathlon many years ago before I got into triathlon and Ironman. And I thoroughly yeah. enjoyed it. It was a real blast. I actually did two. I mean, I just realized now I did another one. So, and it was more like a triathlon, as you described, rather than an adventure race, which is the other yeah. one I did. And I just remember, I mean, I think most of the people that did that race had never really done kayak before, you know, beyond sort of like going around the, the town pond type thing. But so when yes. they actually get in there, it not necessarily anything to do with strength but just technique is just trying to go in a straight line it's yeah, so hard. yeah i mean what, what's it like i mean do people who go to these races are they sort of skilled kayakers no no you get first timers a lot of first timers um i've been in one or two races where i've been paired up with first timers and uh and i've also went, gone to a few races where i've been paired up with you know experts and uh it, like it's great the experts you, they know you followed it. i was following their lead right, you know right. But um, yeah, no, it, it's grand. You know, it's it, it's pretty. It's, it's not it's not that difficult to be honest. I mean, what, all you're really doing essentially is, is putting an oar in, into the water and pushing as hard as you can, and just you learn fairly quick in the first thirty seconds how to steer mm. if you, like, on your first time. I remember I my first time my first first time kayaking. I was in school. I, I was about fourteen or fifteen, I think. And uh, we went away and we were kayaking and we were in the whitewater kayaking the whole lot, you know. And uh, yeah, that, that, that was really, and we learned literally in the 30, first, first 30 seconds of what you're, what you're doing, you know, and you'd be fine. It, the, the, the races themselves, the majority of them are on calm lakes, you know, so there's not too much current of fighting or anything like that. It's literally going in a, in a triangle as such and coming back to your starting point. So, yeah. It, it, it's straightforward enough. So how did you get into this, Greg? Because you weren't always into kayathlon. Where did it start from you? From kayathlon? Um, yeah, I... I can't remember, about two years ago, two years ago maybe, um, a, a friend uh, suggested that I, that I do one of these obstacle races, which are big over in Ireland here and around the world as well, one of these sort of mud races, as I call them. And I did that, and you know, basically this was sort of things so like a twelve k race, and uh, I got through that, and that was great, you know, loved it, and uh, I did one or two of those, and I said, okay, I need a little bit of more, a bit of a challenge here, and this guy again came up and said, look, there's these races I did one years ago, they're uh, like multi sport adventure races, so I was kind of yeah, okay, what is it? And he, he broke it down for me. They said there's swimming, or sorry, there, there's kayaking. Uh, cycling and running and I said is that like a triathlon and he said well it is but for people who can't swim <laughs> <laughs> which is one of my problems I'm, I'm a terrible swimmer you know I, I need something under my foot I can swim in a pool I can do five ten lengths but put me in open water and it's a different story altogether so uh, that's why as a young lad even in my in my as I call my very fit days I would have loved to have done a triathlon uh, uh, but I couldn't swim you know and these races weren't weren't about back then and Ronnie coming around now and I said he said well there's one coming up now in I think it was April and he said would you would you be interested in doing it and yeah, that's about two months off and I said yeah why not you know I, I'd give it I'd give it a blast and uh, so I gave it a blast I did a bit of training had, had a great time and I got hooked and awesome. now 
the rest yeah. is history. But you, you're also a sporty history, guy, yeah. right? You, let's yeah. go back ten years. You had, yeah. uh, I mean, you were a footballer, as you know, a soccer player and a, a Gaelic footballer, and you yeah. had an accident, right? Tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, I played. I played from a from a four or five um, in a football uh, Gaelic football, which is for anyone who doesn't know, it's kind of a mix between I don't know Aussie rules and uh, I don't know soccer, I suppose, but it's quite physical. But um, I played it all the way up to the age of thirty, and then playing a football match, I got a bad back injury, a missed time tackle, and it basically I uh, burst a disc in my back and suffered 80% paralysis in my right leg and I had opera- spinal operations and the whole lot and the doctor said the extra consultants and the experts and said look you're lucky to be walking uh, your football days are over um, take it easy you know you will have a lot of rehab and a lot of physio to do to get you back you'll never be 100% again so um, I slowly started to started to do a bit of physio and uh, the, the feeling came back now I'm still not 100% but um, I'm, I'd say 90% of my right leg is it, it, good to go. But um, yeah, I I started doing a bit of physio, a bit of, a bit, a bit, of, a bit of therapy and that sort of stuff and got me back. But I tried, I fooled myself into thinking, you know, um, I could go back playing football again. I tried a bit of five aside and even a bit of 11 aside. Now, I haven't said that, I was standing in goal. <laughs> so I wasn't running around. But even still, I just... Uh, you know, I wanted to go out on my own terms, and that's sort of all the person I've been. Sort of a bit, little bit bullheaded in that sort of sense, but I finally threw my cards and said, "Look, my football days are gone." So I did nothing. You know, did nothing for a couple of years, and uh, did what anyone else would do. Well, what a lot of people do, and um, probably partied a little bit too hard, and uh, and was doing no sport at all. And uh, um, I kind of uh kind of grab myself and said right look you're, you're going nowhere you're, you're now in your mid 30s it's time to get a grip son <laughs> you know the, the the midlife mid drift was beginning to catch up on me and i said no i have to start getting back so i started doing a little bit of light running um and that was over a year or two and i kind of built it built it back up again and uh i, I learned i was actually fine to run on the road which i know consultants if they're here if they're listening they're probably jumping through the radio yeah, thing right. you know but um no i was fine I, I, the problem was me when i was playing football like when you're twisting and turning and you're getting tackled and stuff and, you know uh, i just wasn't able to wasn't able to hack that so when i'm running, running or cycling in a straight line it's fine i'm perfect it's grand um and uh, i'm flying fit now it's probably as fit as i've, I've been in 10 15 years now you know so uh it's great injury free back is back is perfect so yeah fantastic it's a great yeah. turnaround so now you yeah. you're now three months into starting this website kayathlon yeah so this is your labor of love it's something you're working on it's something you want to go full time on as well what's the story behind kayathlon why are you doing it and we'll then sort of talk a little bit about how you're actually going out and building it on a minimal marketing budget so tell us first why did you start kayathlon why did I start? Yeah, well, one, like I said, it was a labor of love. I got hooked after the first race. I said, this is brilliant, you know. Uh, but one of the issues I had when I was signing up for the first race was trying to find information from a beginner's standpoint. Um, you know, I, I each event, their event organizers will have a website with information on it. And they're great. You know, they're very informative. But um, I wanted one all-encompassing, you know, put out an event guide so, you know, you're not trawling through all these different websites to find out what's happening next on the calendar, what race is next. So you need to plan these things out. You can't just, unfortunately, they're not races. Unless you're super fit, you can't just ter- decide two days beforehand that, uh, oh, I'll, I'll have a pop at this because you don't get the most out of it. You need to start training a couple of weeks in advance or a couple of months in advance, I think, to get the most. But that's just me. But, yeah, um, yeah, we needed. Uh, I, I I saw an opportunity. Said there, there's no website. There are other websites out there that would have, you know, did have these adventure races on them, but they'd also have, you know, running and triathlons. And but they were trying to be, you know, the, those websites were all encompassing, you know, everything athletic. But there wasn't any website out there to help me, the new new guy, um, get started, or at least give me information about it. So I can make an informed decision of whether I want to get into this sort of racing. And um, so then I said, right, I'm a web designer by trade, a graphic designer. 
So I said, right, I'll put together a website. And from there, I'm now here. Right. Excellent. So you set this up because there wasn't anything in the market. It's something that you were solving your, I suppose in startup terms, you're scratching your own itch, as they say, right? You know, you needed to solve a problem that was yeah. out there. You went and solved a problem that people like you were having every day. You're not trying to change the world. You're just trying to fill a gap with information which is not out there, right? So how are you actually promoting this event? Because there's a community of people who are into triathlon in Ireland. Yeah. How are you getting your brand, so to speak, out to these people? Yeah, I mean, it's a lot of sort of organic the, the, the growth on the website and uh, and on the sort of social media side of things that, that I have done is, is being very organic. Um, I've, uh, I, I've a background there's a couple of ways I've done it. I have a background, obviously, in web design and the whole sort of, sort of SEO, you know, Googleization and whatever you want to call it. Um, uh, so I'm sort of using that knowledge to kind of promote the website, you know, through Google searching and all that sort of stuff. But also uh, on the Facebook side of things, I'm in contact with, uh, I'm working in tandem, should I say, with a lot of these event organizers. I've contacted them and they're all up for it, you know. So um, I'm promoting anytime Dave any information say on their Facebook feeds I'm pulling it into mine sharing it out to the general community the likes I think on my Facebook last we checked for about 750 uh, followers or likes whatever you want to call it um, I've Instagram going which is I think it's about 850 at the moment I recently only started Twitter I'm up to 250 on that and um, so it's fair from the sort of social media side I'm sort of always always sort of keeping an eye on information and just just really just it, the community, the, if you want to call that, in, in adventure and, and multi-sport racing, is quite tight knit. I mean, they're all—it's like a family-esque, if you will. Mm. Like, the, the, if I share that something on my Facebook, you know, and uh, what I find is that someone who may have who may be a follower, they're suddenly sending it on to another person saying, "Hey, Peter, do you see this race is coming up?" what you think when we do it, you know, this sort of thing. And it's just seems to be growing and growing and growing. I mean, it's a sort of testament to the way things are here in Ireland at the moment with, with these sort of races that um, it, it's just after exploding in the last two years. I mean, the, it, that, it, that in itself is doing a lot of marketing for me, you know, because people are, are genuinely interested and want to get into these sort of things. Um, I'm also... Um, running a lot of competitions in conjunction with all the with all the races coming up you know free entries and sort of st and that sort of stuff and uh and getting a great bit of following from that you know so mm. um yeah i mean there's I, i'm also going to also um going what i say meet, meet, meeting the event organizers themselves and going to the events and like for example last weekend i was at the quest glendalock race and i got some some uh stuff printed up shirts and t-shirts and that sort of stuff and literally walking through the crowd are people coming up to me going tapping me patting me on the back sort of thing saying you know great website is there anything we can do to help mm. you know how, and how do you really, react to that because that's, that, that's a really interesting question and i know people get that yeah. what would be what's worked for you in answering that question because it's not the first time you had that how do you deal with that question I, I look. I just say to them, listen. Thanks very much. All the kudos. I, 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 thanks very much. But uh, see, probably the best thing you can do is just make sure you share. Get the word out there about these adventures and about the website, about Kayatlon. You know, share it out to your friends. Share, share it out to your colleagues, work colleagues, whoever it may be. Um, a lot of these people that came up to me, like, well, a few of them, they might be involved in triathlon clubs. You know, uh, and they they will then pass the word on to those on onto their triathlon athletic friends and all that sort of stuff but yeah i just say look that's all i need is just get the word out there pass it on share the share the facebook page share the website and uh and we, and we, and we take off from there you know how do you then um make it such that because what i'm trying to get to is that you know you, you've got the plans for this car on website where at some point in the future you'd like to do this full time right and therefore there has to be money involved and yeah. therefore, it has to be, you know, an ongoing concern, this business. So how do yeah. you match that goal with, you know, this idea that this is a community website owned by, um, you know, the fans, so to speak? Well, not, you know, 
legally or physically owned by it, but emotionally owned by it, the sense they feel that this is, as you say, you talk about family, that people feel part of this. How do you match those two things together as you're growing it? You know, because I'm wondering, like, you know, you're out there doing the the events, you're doing, you know, you're there, the grassroots meeting people, you're yeah. responding to all the comments on your Facebook and Instagram mm-hmm. and so on. How can you kind of match? Do you see sort of any kind of like thing you're going to need to be aware of in growing this long term? Um, God, I don't know. It's a good question. Um, well, look, at the moment, you, you say so, sort of from financial point of view, um, you know, if I, in order to go full time, you know, unfortunately, I have to make money out of it. Um, so at, at the moment, I'm currently uh, in, in talks. I'm getting a lot of um, interest from potential advertising on the site. Mm-hmm. Um, from outdoorsy type uh, companies and uh, nutritional companies, um, people wanting to advertise, you know, lessons, kayaking lessons, cycling lessons, all this sort of thing, and, and outdoor running and all that sort of thing. They're all coming now, coming to me, and have been in for the ladies last month. I'm getting getting all these these inquiries about, you know, can we advertise on your site? And that's how I kind of see. Um, making part of most of, of a revenue if I was to go full time which is which would be the, the dream as such you know um on this so yeah from from a financial point of view that that's the way I kind of look at it um from an <clears throat> I say emotional from from the from the the end of the day though this site is all about the people the community uh without those there is no site it's as simple as that so like it is, it is a labour love. It's not like uh, it's a job, you know, that you're going to nine to five. And you're, you're doing it just for the money, you know. It doesn't work that way. It's all to do with the community. Um, I love it. You know, I love the sport itself. Mm. It's really exploding, and I think as long as I have an interest, which I can't see waning anytime, anytime soon, because I'm hooked on this, <laughs> not hook line and thinker, you know. Um, yeah, I. I I, I can only see it growing and growing right. and growing. Well, yeah. well, I agree. I mean, you know, and I think it's it's a great idea. I mean, it's something that you're working on, and it's niche. It's niche enough as well that yeah. Yeah, you know you're, yeah. you're doing something unique. Of yeah. all the things that you do with the website, I know you talked about SEO, you talked about mm-hmm. Instagram, Facebook, and also going out and doing the events and so on. Let's say, for example, for whatever reason, you only had I don't know two hours a week, and you can only do one thing. Mm-hmm. For whatever reason, which of all their activities that you do at the moment, which one would you focus on? Because that would be the one that yields the biggest results for you in terms of growing this website. Well, um, you see, the, see, the great thing about this is, um, and I'm only discovering this of late, um, is, say from the blog side of things, right? And it actually works on Facebook as well. Uh, scheduling, right? I could dedicate a day to doing this, right? Which from the moment I get up to the moment I get down, I could write ten blogs and uh, twenty stories to put up on Facebook, etc. Uh, you can schedule this sort of stuff, mm. you know. So it's not a case of, you know, I could have ten blogs, one today, one tomorrow, one, and so on and so forth, and that be say covered for the ten days. But I'm also what I'm also doing is I'm, I'm spreading it out, spreading the workload out a bit. I go to guys like so. There's lots of lads there, they're coming up to you saying, "How can we help?" You know, we want to be involved in it. Um, and they may have a background in kayaking, or they might be strong cyclists, or whatever the case may be. And they want, I said, right, can you do, can you write blogs? And mm. a couple of them say, yeah, we can. We've done it before, done lots of stuff. I say, fantastic. Okay. But well, like I said, this is, a, this is for the people out there. Keep it in layman's terms. Could you do that? And they say, yeah, no problem. And I have a couple of guys lined up. Um, I'm actually, the blog is due to go live right about now, actually. From one of the guys um, who's a kayaker, primarily a kayaker, and he's coming in, and he's going, and he's going to be blogging from uh, from uh, uh, from a beginner standpoint, you know, literally step by step. Mm-hmm. And this this is how you know you can manage you can manage the content better through the community. People want to get involved in it, and I'm all for it, you know, um, for people because it is, you know, for them in the end, at the end of the day, you know. Yeah, and I suppose when you're you're niche enough as well that 
yeah. they don't have any other kind of platform where they can publish that kind yeah. of content. So for somebody who wants to publish, you're giving them yeah. a, a voice, right? Which is kind of important. That's it. That's it. That's Just in it. terms of the kind of stuff that you're publishing in terms of what works, I'm curious to know, and I guess yeah. any content owner is going to face this decision and you've talked about seo as well mm. is that are you publishing stuff like for example right yeah i just want to write something about kyathlon i'm going to write yeah this is why i love kyathlon and, and you publish an article about that or do you specifically go in and say right i'm going to do the keyword research what are people searching for about kayaks okay like you know the seven best kayak brands or whatever i found yeah, that good. No, how are you no, approaching yeah. it what, what sort of approach no, are you not, not, not too much like that I, because i find if you do that you're kind of you're you're nearly corporatizing it. You know, it's not what people want to hear. You know, I, I when I write it, I write it very much in layman's terms. You know, you're not going to find, um, you know, me writing about, for example, uh, uh, you know, a week beforehand, you have to take 0. 0.32 grams of carbs this day and for the next. You know, I'm not going to break it down as, as some websites do. I, I keep it as simple and as you know as practical as I can. You know, I don't want to scare people off. At the end of the day, you know, because without the viewers or the readers, there is no site. You know, I, I keep it. Um, obviously, you know, you, the way you can sort of phrase things can be can be sort of tweaked. You know, to, to make it a little bit more friendly SEO wise. But um, yeah, I I, I I don't focus too. Hard. I've I've seen websites where it's as clear as day that it, these are just it's an SEO. Uh, 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 you know expedition that they're going on within this blog you know it's, it's not it's not they're losing focus on the content you know they just want to get it read so that they get more readers through and looks better on their stats not for me you know i want to keep it keep it fresh and keep it keep it keep it true to what the visitor wants to hear what the reader wants to hear good and how are you um measuring in your you know your website success yeah. is it you know your newsletter subscribers increasing website traffic or is it you know like people emailing you back and saying hey look greg loved what you did there what what's sort of working for you at the moment where you yeah, can actually see the growth a bit of both i mean yeah like you, you can get you can get wrapped up in stats you know people can get wrapped, wrapped up in stats and you know uh, you kind of uh, you always have to keep one eye on it you know but when you hear feedback and i do get a lot of feedback saying you know love the site this is brilliant. This is really working. It got me into racing. It got me into, you know, for example, recently I am um, the, the race last Saturday that I did. Um, I got a couple of guys. Uh, I, I entered in a team of 13 lads or, and ladies in and uh, it started, say the training started a couple of months ago and a couple of these guys had, had never hadn't run in years and hadn't done anything in their training. One of the guys lost in a, massive amount of weight and for me getting him to the start line and to the finish line you know seeing him coming over is again how is, is what it's all about you know um getting people up and getting people active and that's one of the ways i measure because i do get feedback from people like that saying i've done nothing i, I haven't done anything in years and uh, thanks to you and your website i've now got up and uh, and got out and i've done my first race and um that's one of the ways i do measure because then you know for a fact that it's working people are, you're um, making a difference right yeah exactly exactly and that's what it's all about i noticed on your your facebook page as well just out of interest mm -hmm. something worth commenting you've got a hundred percent response rate and it says yeah. you typically reply within minutes which i that's guess right, yeah. facebook likes that because it means that you're actually responding to people contacting you is that you know a conscious decision i mean how does that work yeah. for you because I, I imagine it's quite hard to maintain right all hours yeah <laughs> recently i for years and years you know i for someone who a graphic and web designer a bit of a techie phobe right i've um <laughs> i got slagged to a high hilt i had an old nokia c2 or something like that one of these ones you charge and last for three weeks you know oh, yeah. not such thing as facebook or anything on it. and recently it just packed it in after about five years you know and uh, god love it but i i got a new phone and uh, it's has all the, the usual smartphones and basically when i see someone coming up my phone you know someone will ask me a question or reply them back i just simply just reply back it takes takes 30 seconds to reply to somebody you know and as they keep coming through so that's yeah I, i'm very conscious i just do try and keep keep it fresh and keep people engaged and that's one of the things uh, another way 
you know, on, on some one or two levels. So it does work that um, from a from a you know you're saying Facebook likes that, you know, but also the the the, the end user, the, the 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 viewer, the reader, the writer, they also like that, you know, and that keeps them engaged. So it's it works. Everyone's a winner, you know. So excellent. All right, good. Just finish up. Tell us a little bit about what's coming up on the the triathlon calendar. Name a name a race that's coming up in the future that we should look forward to. If we were to start, if we were to get into triathlon, where should we start? Give us something to Give wet our appetite in the, the world of triathlon. Yeah, right. Well, like the, the, there's good load and come up. There's a new one actually. One of the competitors. Um, every every week or so, I have a what I uh, on the blog I have a, a competitor spotlight. I call it, where basically I just I. You just see in the community that uh, different people come up through Instagram and Facebook and, and they, they do a lot of races or I might see, this guy looks interesting, you know, um, and I would interview them, basically, uh, 20, 30 questions, and then we post it up on the blog. Uh, one of these guys, uh, and I didn't know this prior to actually interviewing him, he's uh, done a good few races, but he's actually organizing his own one. It's coming up, um, it's called Off the Bloom. Which looks very looks very good. It starts in Kinnity Castle, in, uh, and it is up on the Sleeve Bloom Sleeve Bloom Mountains uh, in the Midlands there, uh, which looks interesting. It's the first time. It's only a limited. This only a very limited one. It's only two hundred and fifty uh, entrants into this one. So, usually they're anywhere from fifteen hundred to three thousand um, would enter these races. There's um, also Gale Force uh, have one or two coming up. Uh, which look interesting. I, I'm going to sign, start signing myself up personally for about four or five more of them now in the next couple of days. So commit mm -hmm. myself to it. Uh, Quest have a, a couple more coming up. There's one coming up at the, at the end of the month. Um, the Black Stairs, it's called. The Black Stairs Mountains in Ireland. And uh, again, there's three different distances in that. There's the, they call it the three steps, the five steps, and the seven steps, depending on the the distance that you're doing and I kind of like to look at those ones uh, I kind of iron up that that five step uh, race which is I think it's 45 or kilometer. I, I'm not sure the actual breakdown but it looks quite nice um, look the, the best place to go actually is and here's a bit of a free plug is to go to the website yeah. and go on to the upcoming event guide the cathlon.ie website and go look at the upcoming event guide so like I said there's about 20 more races to go in the season and um, probably be our best bet because they're different races for different people. Excellent. Well, that's the best starting point. Greg, it's yeah. been fantastic having you on the show. Where do we find out more about you? You've already plugged the website. Let's give that to the listeners again, as well as tell us about your Facebook and Instagram feed so we yeah. know where to go and find that as well. Yeah, I mean, uh, yeah, the, fa the website, kayathlon.ie. Uh, my Facebook page is um, facebook.com forward slash um, kayathlon Ireland. Just remember that, yeah. And uh, the Instagram's the same. It's it's uh, Instagram forward slash, forward slash Kayathlon Ireland. Uh, Twitter is forward slash Kayathlon. Yeah. Excellent. So it's all, it's all up there. They're all, they're all interlinked. If you go into one, you'll find a link to the other one. Excellent. Yeah. We'll put all the details in the show notes so people can find out whether you are already into Kayathlon or this interview with Greg has spiked your interest your curiosity I should say in Kyathlon and you fancy giving it a go whether you're somebody who's been on the couch for the last 10 years or somebody who just loves the thrill of multi sport or adventure racing get out there and try it out and uh, why don't you also uh, ping Greg either on Facebook Instagram or Twitter and let him know that you heard him on this show and I'm sure he'll be happy to help you out and who knows? You know, triathlons are growing sport in Ireland, so let's see where it goes in the future as well, as well as the future of triathlon.ie, the website. And that was Greg Dillon, the founder of Triathlon. Greg, thank you so much for coming on the show today. It's a privilege, pleasure. Thanks, babe. Endurance FM, voice of the endurance sport business. Find out more at www.endurancefm.com.